you heard it, yeah? <laughs> that, that there will be a brief review of what will cover of what will cover. A brief review. Okay. And, uh, and then we will focus on this lesson. Okay. Now, this is for review. Okay. What to say what, what about here? Okay. See, the objective of M4L is for short, it's meaningful living. Okay. The objective, the first line, is to wake people up from their meaningless existence of everyday business and boredom. Are you awake? Yes. <laughs> Do you need to be waking up? Do you need to be awakened? Thank you. One thing that really, really grab you is that people busy and going through emotion and eating, drinking, sleeping, working, and hustling here and there. And they never pause to think about what life is all about. What's the best way to live their life? How to be their best self? They simply busy, 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 and they bore sick more stimulation, and they die like an animal. They, they, they never really, never really thought about what they have really lived. You could die without actually living. So that is sad part. So, so the, the beginning thing, the beginning part is, is awakening to wake you up. To, to accept your life, accept yourself, and to see how can you live a better life. How can I make this life more fuller and more vital and more rewarding and, and, and more happy, more healthy, more exciting? So you, you really have to, the first part, you really have to stop what you're doing, like you're doing now, right? From your regular schedule and stop and think, how can I make that better? Now the second point is that the focus on role of meaning and well-being. Do you know that in, in positive psychology, there's a consensus. Meaning is a key part for authentic happiness. Meaning is a key part for well-being. The meaning is, is, is a central organizing concept. If you want to live a good life, you will want to live a life that's, that's worth living, you, you can't get away from, from meaning because Meaning is everywhere, and <coughs> meaning is you. Okay, and, and your meaning system, your belief system, and meaning is the core part of you. So I say, Nina, what is the core part of you? Y yeah, freedom. And meaning, yeah, yeah. It's in my meaning system, right? It's the key language, right? It's it's not how you look, you know. It's not how you dress up. It it is. What if you believe, your worldview, your self-concept, you know, that, that is many concepts. The third point for this course is to teach people meaning-making tools, okay? meaning-making skills to cope with negative and for your life full, full potential. The part of meaning is that it's the most possible. <coughs> people about oh, how, how, how you can be resilient. You know, to be resilient, you have to be flexible. You have to adapt to changes, have anxiety, changes every year in your own life. So, I'm saying that your capacity for meaning making is your most powerful tool because it can help you to transform negative into positive and also can show you how you can discover your higher purpose and how you discover your own strengths and weaknesses and how to fulfill your potential. 
if you ask uh, almost anybody in party psychology, they will tell you that that to, to divide your pool to be the best you can ever be, to become the best you can ever become, to fulfill your potential, and to live meaningful life. Okay. The next point is to learn how to flourish, how to flourish in spite of faith and circumstances and human weakness. Do you know, now we're safe, we are sitting in the comfort of all this room. But you never know, I mean, life is scary. Best thing can happen to anyone, anywhere. And Sandy, Storm Sandy just hit America, many cities in America. And, and, and some people can walk on the street and hit by a car or something. You know, life, we just can't, we, we can never tell when something bad can happen to you or to me or to anybody. Life is, it is never as secure as I would like it, okay? So what, what I'm saying is that, I don't know your fate, I don't, you don't know my fate. Fate may certainly be our control, right? Which family you're born into? The, which era of the society you, you live? So where, where you're born? So those are matters of faith, but the some answers that you all have human weaknesses, right? Each one of you. So the challenge is that how we can make the best of us in spite of that all, in spite of faith, in spite of some answers, in, in spite of your family, in spite of your personal weakness. You know, one guy here, this guy is good in everything. He's my student, let me listen to you. Uh, he, he, talk to him, right? he's a fellow. <laughs> uh, he's good in everything, but still, uh, I don't know what, 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 what he has been tested. Right? What he has been tested, because life can be very tough. Life can throw a curveball at you, and hit you right in the face. I've been tested a lot. Huh? <laughs> we tested a lot recently. Yeah, right? I'm better for it. I'm better for it. So you never, you never know what life throws at you. you. You never know what tomorrow holds. So the final point is that we want to achieve better mental health through many and communion. Uh, that, that's the internal thought. You, we come to the meetup, as a result, and hopefully, that you enjoy better mental health. So meaning and communion, right? So discover how to make use of your meaning capacity, and how to be part of a communion, a forming new relationship. Better mental health through meaning and communion. I think that, that most religions are trying to do the same thing, right? The same are doing better than others. And this is not religious. This, this is not a religious organization. But we are also trying to to help people to live a better life through meaning and communion. Now, here is a a sad picture. Uh, it's uh, Jesse. Yeah, Jessica, it, it released that home. CAMH. So I say that. Uh, Center for Addiction and Mental Health. So this is Canadian statistics. That's a report released by Center of Addiction, Addiction and, and Mental Health. Mental Health. Mental health. Mental health yeah. mm -hmm. Now, when I look at the numbers, it, it, it's a why of every five Canadians have some mental health problem. But that's pretty scary. Right? One out of five. And uh, about eight percent of the population has major depression. Major depression requires clinical help, require medication. And then you have uh, anxiety, twelve percent. 
one of ten Canadian report symptoms considered with alcohol or drug addiction. One of ten. Fifty. Seventy percent of the mental health problems occur during childhood or adolescence. That's scary. That's very scary. Most children don't realize, most parents don't realize that children, the adolescents, are most vulnerable to mental health problems. And not to make parents guilty, but parents are often part of the problem. By over control, the children of the emperor. So, so that is a really, really scary. This is even more scary. For that group, they are more likely to report mental health for 15 to 24, that age group, they're more likely to have severe mental health problems. Now, not too long ago, my team at the same published a, an article called Broken, what's it called? What's it called? <laughs> but it's called Broken Generation, something like that. You report that nowadays, the students, in big university, the Cornell, in Ivy University, in Canada, in Queens, Queens is called the suicide university. One month, there were five people commit suicide. Suicide university. Imagine Queens, one of the top universities in Canada. Now the university students no longer see go to constant service and say, oh, I'm a little bit upset, oh, I'm a little you know, minor things, not the serious things. University students are going through se severe mental health problems, like major depression and suicidal tendencies. So you should wonder, you know, what's happening? What's happening in our society? This is not this is not good picture, right? But last one, even, even, even more scary, mental illness is the second leading cause of human disability and premature death. You know, mental, when you suffer from mental illness, you're no longer able to function. You can't function fully. Also, you're diverted. So what we're talking about is that in this context, okay, so talk about mental health, how to improve your mental health is not a luxury. It's not a luxury. Okay. It's a necessity. So this is a picture. Any question about this, this uh, information? Yes. How does it compare with other countries? We, we don't have the statistic, but uh, we, we know that uh, Canada is relatively prosperous and healthy. In the well-being index, Canada is right in the middle. It, it, it's better than most. No. I'm working on that actually. Uh, and the World Health Org according to the World Health Organization, around 15% of people around the world describing themselves as uh, having some type of this mental health disability. Huh? So 15%? 15%. In Canada, it's one of about 20. Yeah. A little bit higher. We didn't hear what he says. We uh, oh, didn't hear what he said. Yeah, that the World Health Organization uh, says that uh, the statistics uh, uh, from them says that about 15% 15, 15 of people around the world have some type of disability, mental health disability. I'm working on that now, that's why I know the statistics. Mm -hmm. One, five, one, one, five. So generally, Canada is, 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 is very middle. Right? 
not as bad as in other countries, and not as good as in other countries. But mental health problem is a huge problem. And people do sometimes, you know, have no energy, no desire for living. Uh, they, they, may, they may be suffering from depression, but they don't know. Yes, really. Why is that, doctor? Well, we'll talk about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, that, that situation, okay, okay. It, it, it's not a good situation, okay. Why, why do we get that stage, that that's good question, okay? Let's see what happens, okay. There's something wrong with society, okay. There, there's something wrong society, we're living in a broken, conflicted world. How do I know we are living in a broken world? Most families are broken. There are how many single single parent households? How many divorces? Um, the family is, is the key unit for mental health, for well-being. Key unit. But now instead of being able to become a haven for happiness, for wealth, the family is broken. The family becomes a source of of quarrel and strife and conflict. Some children say, oh, I'm going to go home. I, I'm going to go home is too, too, too painful. Home too painful. They don't go home. They, they, want, they want to escape from home. Or community. Now, so in, in the old days, the community center usually where people get together, help each other, serve each other. The community is unraveling. Right? We got all kind of ele bad elements in the community, toxic elements. You know, pocket poverty, addiction, the pockets make the community unsafe. Or, or church. Your church is doing the job of church or synagogue, the church is doing the job, it's also the best place on earth where people love each other, help each other. But many churches, they don't care where they come and go. You know, the, the, the message, after they say, oh, hello, shake your hand. And they do see over 10 days, you might be dead, right? But nobody really, really know. So we're in a living situation where the community is broken. There's one problem. The, the same problem is that people live in isolation or alienation. Remember last time we said we are relational beings. If we live in isolation, alienation, we cannot possibly feel well. Happy people are people with good friends, with good family. Miserable people are people with no, no relationship. So if we do not have good, good relationship, if there's something, there's something important missing. You don't want to talk to, you don't want to share things together, you don't want to care about you, you don't want to care for. If you have a relational deficit, I'm talking about deficit now. If you have a relational deficit, then you'll be miserable.